we're going to talk a little bit about ALDAs. Now, the ALDA is a device that's been called an anti-jerk device, an anti-smoke device. There's a lot of different terms for what this thing does. And really the best way to explain it is let's talk about what it takes to get the thing removed from the car so that we can take it apart, see how it works and see what can fail in it and talk about how that changes how your car runs. So let's go over into the engine bay of my blue W123 here with an OM617, talk about how to get your OM617's Alda removed. So this device right here is our Alda. It has a hose that goes over to an overboost solenoid and then over to the intake manifold. We've talked about this before in our hunting for more power video. Now, this device needs to come off for the purpose of this video. So what we're gonna need is a 12 millimeter wrench or ratchet, socket, something, to crack this banjo fitting loose. Now watch, because there are little crush washers on either side of that, and we don't want to lose those little crush washers because they will go flying and vanish. Now. I've already disconnected the other end of my hose here, so that would not normally come off. That would just dangle and you would lose these crush washers, but I've already undone that, so watch out for that. Now, there's several ways to do this. You can use a 27 and a 24 millimeter wrench underneath. It'll make more sense once I've got this off. My normal thing to do is an inch and 1 16th open end wrench because it's a lot easier to find an inch and a sixteenth than a twenty-seven, at least in America, and a gigantic pair of channel lock pliers. So essentially what we're going to do is take this wrench and snake it in next to all these lines and then get it onto that bottom thing. Then we're going to take our giant pair of channel locks and kind of in a motion where we're pushing the wrench toward the engine and twisting this this way, a lot of times you can get these to crack loose. And of course yours will not be that easy, but um, now see that that will spin back and forth. You can reach underneath it here with your fingers and spin this nut that is on top of the injector pump. It'll make more sense once it's off again. And there we have it. Our Alda is removed. So you see the bottom here has threads and then this has a nut. So it's almost like a flare fitting or something of those lines that if you can crack this loose, you can just spin that off and take this off of the injector pump. So now that we've got this removed, let's run this thing over to the bench and talk about its function, what it does, and why you should probably pull yours off and inspect it, or at least test it on the car. Over to the bench we go. Wanted to show everybody something. This is my blue Mercedes OM617 W123's ALDA. It's a acronym for something Android something capsule, I, I, I don't know. The purpose of this thing is to allow more fuel once the turbo starts building boost pressure. And it does that, if you can look down in there and you see that little kind of ring right down in the bottom of this thing, it does that by as boost pressure is applied to this inlet here through the tube over um, off the intake manifold, through the overboost solenoid, and then to this right here, it should pull that little thing up in. Now I want you to take a look at what mine is doing when I apply pressure to it. See that? It just popped out. You let go of it. And it just kind of sets in there, but you put pressure on it and it comes out, which is not the right way. It is supposed to go in. So what that means is the diaphragm inside of this Alda 
has snapped and it is limiting my pressure at boot under boost to that without boost. So essentially I'm getting no fuel enrichment. I'm getting no extra fuel once the turbo spools. So let me show you how we can confirm that. We're going to grab our trusty manual impact screwdriver and just separate this. There's a little o-ring seal down here, a little bit of carbon from um, the EGR and this little assembly right here we should be able to unscrew this and disassemble this stuff normally yeah that should come apart now something is askew here because can see there's a little dent right here. Uh, you can't see it because the camera won't focus. Come on. You can almost see it. A little dent in the corner of that. It looks like where it's crimped though. So this is an emissions control device of sorts. Um, it's just to prevent excessive fuel before boost. So what I'm going to do, if we just do that, removing that lower piece that sticks through here, then the boost pressure no longer has any control over how much fuel is applied. Your right foot will now control all of the fueling. So let's take this put it back on the car and see if it makes it drive any different. Let's go reinstall this. So now as you can see our Alda has been gutted. There is no lower piece there so we can reinstall this as basically a dust cover and then we can see how the car performs without this thing uh, hindering the fuel delivery. So essentially installation is nice and easy. Just put it back on and then spin that nut below. Just start it on there good. And then once you're getting it close, grab yourself your wrench. big giant channel locks and just give that a little heft so that it's going to stay in place. Yep, that's not going anywhere. Then we're going to take our banjo fitting here with our two crush washers and just thread that back in. Twelve millimeter. Snug that so it doesn't go anywhere. And then here's what I've done just for a temporary test. Um, just for a temporary test, I've taken a piece of vacuum line and pinched it over with a zip tie so that I can plug it on there. So that, that way, you know, there's no wasps trying to build a nest in there or something. But and I mean, at first glance too, if you tuck that away a little bit, kind of you know, drop it down there especially if you trimmed a zip tie tail, it would still look to an untrained eye like everything is hooked up like it's supposed to be. There's no billet stuff there that, you know, screams uh, this is modified. So let's take the car out and uh, see how it runs. So there we have it. Removing the Alda, testing the Alda, finding out that it has failed, reinstalling it. Let's go for a test drive. So as I'm pulling up to this stop sign, we're up to operating temperature. We'll do a little pull here. OK, 
okay, wow. Uh, the car feels kind of fast now. I was up to 40 very quickly. Um, I'd say no doubt the uh, SD314 injector nozzles that we put in have made a difference in the low end power. And I think the um, Alda has made a, a difference in the top end power. We're going up this hill now. It's a fairly steep hill and I'm easily gaining speed. That's, that's impressive. It wouldn't do that before. And we're back up to 40. No problem up a hill. That's legitimately impressive. Um, that is a dramatic difference. There's no doubt in my mind that that all the being collapsed or broken, leaking, whatever you want to say it was doing, uh, now that it's not doing that anymore, because there's no guts inside of it, um, man, this car is powerful. That's, that's impressive. It, it really, it, it is moving. Now that's with the AC off, but still, that is, that is legitimately a night and day difference. So I guess what we can take away from that is ladies, gentlemen, boys, girls, check your Aldis. Make sure those things aren't leaking down or make sure they aren't working backwards and restricting your fuel flow instead of giving you that fuel once your car starts building boost. Because that is, that has made a substantial difference in how this car drives. Yeah, very nice. So I guess with that in mind, we'll end this video here. Um, check your Aldas out. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you in the next one.